When those large trees towered out there, 40, 50, 55 feet to a limb, and just so slick and pretty, it looked like a squirrel would fall off of one if he tried to climb it. Words won't describe it. Well, that provided shelter for the wildlife. And above everything else that I really loved to hear was the great horn owl. He was a character. He would sit back in one of them holes in the dark all day, and he'd let out a squall, who, 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 who are you? And at a far distance, he'd hear another an answer, who, 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 who are you? Loved to holler. But say he was a little dancer. In tapping these trees, it runs through the minds of many people. Does it injure the tree? I will say no, that it doesn't injure the tree because you only drill in an inch and a half or two inches, and a good healthy tree will heal up in two or three years till it'll only be a little scar in the bark. The best time for making and producing is when we're having uh, warm days and cold nights, when we get a light freeze every night, when it warms up in the morning, 9, 10 o'clock, then they'll produce good maybe till midnight that night. you have tap and your trees are producing in a few hours time some 8 12 24 hours then the gathering starts Everything goes on for about one month. And during this month, from 15th of February to the 15th of March, which is our season here in this part of the country, they'll be closed down periods. The weather will maybe shut those trees off for five days. But when the weather's right, then they'll start producing again. The biggest job about making maple syrup is gathering in the water out of the woods. The early settlers had cattle teams to transfer the water from the woods. In the later days, we had horses, which that takes the strain off of maple syrup making. My father was a lover of good horses. They had to be good or they couldn't stay in our barn. No tractor, no truck. They were your power at that time. We used our horses for everything. They were like the man on the farm. They never, they never run out of a job. One of the wonderful parts about farming was during the thrashing season when the whole neighborhood would get together. The men would come together to do the thrashing. The women in the neighborhood would get together to do the cooking and enjoy every minute. <laughs> We 
look forward. We look forward to fashion season because everybody, uh, they get reacquainted again, you know. They come closer together during fashion season. And we had every kind of fellowship there was back in that time. In the farming, at off season, we would go to the woods and haul logs and make lumber. And when they cleared the land, cattle was the main power for logging. The cattle could climb steeper banks and they could actually get down on their knees and pull. Horses and cattle were used on the farm as a beast of burden. Of course, uh, we haven't got the horsepower and the oxen like they used to have, so we just bring it up with the way I've got us expressing it, the uh, main strength and awkwardness with toad it in. In boiling down maple syrup, the first thing is to get a good fire to going. And on these cold, frosty mornings, when uh, the sun comes up red in the east and a cold south wind, that fire feels awful good. It feels awful good. Cooking down maple water is simply uh, evaporating the water out of the sugar. The steam or evaporation, that floats away in the air, but the sugar remains in the kettle. Forty gallon of that water will make one gallon of syrup. Then you have to transfer the water from your storage barrels into the kettle. You fill them full which ordinarily takes about one barrel of water. If we only had one barrel of water, it would only take about three hours. But when you have got eight barrels of water, which we have had many times, well, that is a hard day's cooking. So in order to evaporate this water into syrup, it takes lots of cooking. I'll tell you how a man get an eighth grade education in 10 years. The reason I am so smart, when I went to school in the old one room schoolhouse, down on the south side, halfway down, there was a piece of quarter round missing and that on the floor. And the mice had chewed the hole up through there. Well, in the bad weather, most of the children would sit there in the schoolhouse during the noon hour and eat their lunch, spill crumbs on the floor. One o'clock, when school took up, I always managed to sit close to that mouse hole. Well, when everybody got still, you'd see him stick his head and shoulders out. Then he'd back he'd go. Then directly he would run out a little piece and back he'd go. And eventually, he'd get a little too far out, and I'd get busy studying and slip my foot over that hole till he couldn't get through. Directly, he'd take out across over on the north side where the girls was at. Well, there'd be about 16 of them get up on their desk, and they'd holler and squall and go on and such commotion. I'd put my book down and I'd watch them, but when they got to making it too tight for him, I'd I'd get my foot under the desk where it belonged, and then when he made the last run for that hole, I, his old tail would just pop when he went in. Couldn't afford to let him kill him. The fun would all been over. When your fire is uh, hot, and really working good. It's uh, maybe having tendency to chump that water plumb out of the kettle. 
if it goes to getting out, stir it down, or you can raise it up in the air and pour it back. The one that's cooking, they have to watch not to waste what they've already worked for. Another time I left Mount Joy School ground under a tight hat. It was during the war, World War I, when Kaiser Wilhelm was a ruler over Germany. Well, you all know that he was our number one enemy at that time. They had hired a young married woman for a teacher. And she was very patriotic. And uh, the first thing was to do of a morning when 9 o'clock come, school took up, sing the Star Spangled Banner. Well, the Star Spangled Banner never was, in my notion, too easy a song sung and do a good job. So one morning, she's up there in old-fashioned in Oregon, and she was sitting on that stool, and she was really a paw on them pumps, and toot, 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 that old organ was a-going. According to her story, we wasn't doing too good a job of singing. And she twisted around on that stool, and she shook her finger at us, and said, they ain't a patriotic kid in the schoolhouse. You're nothing but a bunch of slackers said, uh, Kaiser Wilhelm could do as good a job of singing as Jones is doing. Well, she done said too much then. I said yes, and Kaiser Wilhelm could come as near a plan as you do. <laughs> then they didn't have a whist. They had clubs. They had a club for six guys and myself. She grabbed one of them clubs, and here she comes. And I thought, well, now it's a poor set of legs that can't take care of the body. And I run like a rabbit. Well, in the meantime, they shut down the school on account of the flu. And that was my last day of school. In boiling down, when it comes to finishing, you must watch. In case of uh, letting it go too far and ruining it, and when you uh, get it down to a point where it's about ready, you can tell very well by looking at it when it's close. But then right on the final touch, take a metal pan, and you dip through that hot syrup, and you raise it up, pour it out back into the kettle, but hold it some two foot above the kettle where the air can hit it. If it drips free and clean from your metal pan, it's still water in it. It's not ready. But when it's just coming around to where it's ready to take up, when that last few drops comes out of there, it'll wax. It'll wax across the edge of your pan, and when that air hits it, when it does that, then it's ready to go through a cheesecloth into a milk can or whatever container you're going to keep it in. At the end of a long, hard day, from daylight to dark, it has boiled down to this. A milk can of beautiful golden brown maple syrup. After we have let the syrup set for a couple of days, and after your uh, syrup is cleared, if you want sugar, you go on down. About 11 pounds of uh, syrup will make 7 pounds of sugar. In other words, you take another 4 pounds of water out of that, that syrup to make the sugar. Clear 
applying is taking the dirt out of the syrup. And that is done by using the white of an egg whipped to a foam and uh, spread over the cold syrup and let the syrup come to a slow boil. And the syrup will boil through that foam and then it will uh, gather these particles. You skim them off carefully then and throw that in the waste. And that is it. You hold it between you and the light. If it's been cleared right, there won't be a thing of floating around in there. It'll be just clear as any. I'm going to tell you, back when I was a boy, how happy people was and how poor they were. I knew in one case where there's two families lived over here on Big King Cave. They had a large family of children, and they were quite musicians. They'd take their fiddles and their banjos and their guitars and French harp, and they'd go to some of the more prosperous farmers' house through the winter months, and they'd want to entertain. fiddle and they'd sing and they'd dance and they'd have a big time till midnight. And they'd get ready to go home. They'd say, Uncle Louie, this is one of the men, would you let us have a peck of cornmeal and a gallon of molasses so we'd have something to eat tomorrow? Now the part that buffaloed me was how could you go and fiddle and dance and sing till midnight and not a bite in the home to eat for the next day. But it was just that way. In making sugar, after it once comes to a boil, you've got to be very cautious with a low fire. If you didn't watch it and it boiled over on the stove, created a big smoke in the kitchen, and then Mother was out of humor. So, so you, that way you had to just keep a constant watch on your sugar making. You can mold it in anything, but in order to keep that from sticking, grease your container real good with butter. I might tell you this, when my father used to make the maple sugar, he'd watch it and he'd test it. And he'd say, come on now, get in on this because it, I've got to do something with it. Well, then we went for our last spoonful of wax. But uh, that was something to eat. To get your sugar, you just keep boiling the syrup down to a stage. And the way you test that is by pouring a spoonful of hot syrup into a cup of cold water. If it's ready for sugar, it'll wax. And you can fish it out with a table fork, and it'll hardly stain your water. Uh, in making your maple sugar, when it is ready to be poured into the mold, why, it is well to take the container with the syrup in it in one hand and a large spoon in the other and whip it fast and hard. That will cause that to kind of foam up just a little and it grains. It's uh, more after sugar just right without it being a waxy nature. 
we have undoubtedly lost something. Because you see these people out here on these tractors working with machinery. They do 20 times as much work in a day than we do. But when we had that slow operation and working with those horses, you could hear people singing in the field for miles. Some whistled, some sang. And uh, now I believe you could go from New York to California and never hear a person a singing in the field. <laughs> Old Dan Tucker's a very fine man. He washed his face in the frying pan. He combed his head with a wagon wheel, and he died with toothache in his heel. Well, that was it. Maple syrup, sugar, and the wax, just before it's sugar, is out of this world when it comes to eating. Uh, they just, they not just many things like it. I never did wish to live my life over, but if I was to live it over, I believe I'd choose to go back, uh, to go back. Old Dan Tucker's a very fine man. He washed his face in the frying pan. He combed his head with the wagon wheel, and he died with two fake in his head.